Hello everyone, my name is Gus One Bear, and I was born and raised here in South Florida, Florida. And being a native Floridian, fishing the Everglades has been a great passion of mine. The Everglades has always been the main foundation of my day-to-day -day life. I've had the great opportunity to work with many different kinds of animals, but the animals I normally work with are crocodilians and snakes. Now, South Florida water system is teeming with many native and non-native species of fish. I want to share with you some interesting facts. And today, I want to talk about invasive species of fish. But not just any species. There's one particular species known as a cichlid. Cichlids are not native to South Florida, but you'll find many different species of cichlids here in our waterways. For some species of cichlids, that could even tolerate marine conditions. They could be found in areas of high salt content, like brackish water, saltwater marshes, also um, mangrove swamps. And they are also tolerant of very poor oxygenated areas. And some can even survive in 40 degrees of water. Now that's pretty impressive for a tropical fish. You can find them in freshwater canals, rivers, ponds, lakes, you name it, chances are you're going to find a cichlid. And here in Miami-Dade County, they are plentiful. <laughs> to me, they're probably the ultimate invasive species just because of their ability to survive and adapt in many different types of water conditions. Now, there is one species that has made a great impact in our Everglades ecosystem, and that is the Mayan cichlid. Now the mine cichlid is from southeastern Mexico. Also the Yucatan Peninsula, places like Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua. And today, these fish has overtaken our waterways. They are everywhere. Now the first discovery of the mine cichlid was back in the early 80s and it was found in the Florida Bay. Now the mine cichlids are often confused with the blue tilapia and the Oscars which are also nine native species of fish found here in Florida. So how can you identify the mine cichlid? They tend to have a bright red or orange coloration on their throat and belly area. Now the mine cichlid also has broken lateral line and they tend to have six to eight bars uh, going vertically down their body. The mine cichlid tends to have a signature marking. And like the peacock bass and the Oscars, which are cousins to the mine cichlid, peacock bass will have the spot on the tail, but they'll tend to have a yellow border around the spot. The Oscars will have a red border. Now the mine cichlid will have the same spot, but the coloration around the spot is more like a light blue or turquoise in colors. And that's a good way to identify the fish. So, what does a mine cichlid eat? Mine cichlids are predators to many small fish, grass shrimp, crayfish, small frogs, insects, and even vegetation. I have personally seen a water snake get pulled under by a cichlid. Of course, the snake was too large for the cichlid to eat, but the fact that the cichlid tried anyways, I was really impressed. Which leads me to believe that due to its aggressive and territorial nature, does conflict with our native species for food. Also the survival of our younger native fish being prey to the Mayan cichlid. We all know the negative impact of an invasive species, but let's turn this around. What will be the positive of having a Mayan cichlid in your waterways? I'm going to give you four positive facts. Number one, the Mayan cichlid and all cichlid species becomes an abundant food source for all wildlife, like the alligators, snakes, wading birds, otters, and other fish. Since they can survive in shallow and stagnant areas, makes them an easy resource for a lot of our wildlife. 
number two. Now, the good thing about having cichlids in general, if you're a fisherman, is that we have certain species, like the largemouth bass, will only feed early in the morning or later at sundown. But in the midday, of the heat of the day, that's when the cichlids are mostly active, including the peacock bass, the guapotes, the oscars, and the mine cichlid. So yes, they make a very exciting fish to catch, especially when nothing else is biting. And if you're fishing light tackle, um, light lines and lures and stuff like that, or fly fishing, makes them really fun. Number three. Since the mine cichlids are not native species, they are no size or bag limits. If anything, the state encourages you to keep all the cichlids. And I'll tell you what, mine cichlids, are pretty tasty. Number four, they make excellent aquarium fish. Guys, this is how they got here to begin with. Exotic fish owners illegally have released these fish in our local lakes and canals uh, for whatever reasons. Mostly the fish has gotten too large for its enclosure or the fish has become very aggressive with other aquarium fish. So therefore, they get released. And that is how it all starts. Well guys, there you have it. Four positive facts as to why it's good to have mine cichlids here in the Everglades. Guys, we can't change what has happened. We could just move forward with our knowledge of what we know. And mine cichlids are here to stay. See them as a native. I hope these facts has equipped you with a better understanding for your next South Florida fishing adventure. This is Gus One Bear, and you're watching Two Bears Outdoors. See y'all later. Till the next time.